Hello and welcome back. Um, as you can see, I've left my comfy chair to give you a goodbye speech from the program committee. So, quick review from our side. Uh, this whole conference was run on two parallel Zoom meetings. Uh, we used Zoom because we were able to pin speakers there, share the screen and remotely control the screen, uh, which allowed us to give you even better uh, slide performance and uh, resolution. All speakers and all heralds arrived on time. Uh, we were very anxious about this, but it worked out great. It's a bit different than running a in-person conference because you don't see if someone is there, but everything worked out great. All talks of day one and the beginning of this morning uh, are already released on YouTube and are on our website on dnoc12.dnoc.de. And all slides will follow this week as well as all recordings of today. In total, we spoke for 11 hours and 30 minutes. So that was also very interesting and I hope you enjoyed it all. I would like to thank everyone who presented at this conference, be it as a workshop, uh, be it as a talk, or for everyone who even submitted and sadly got rejected. Uh, we valued all your uh, input. It was great. It made the conference what it is, because as I mentioned in the opening, no content, no conference. I'd also like to extend my warmest thanks to all heralds who've guided you through all these talks. They've done an amazing job. Um, the coordination was very hard for us, because as well, they're not here. We are only four people in this room, and it was still going very smoothly. Everyone was doing their very best to keep the conference running, and I think it worked out great. Thank you. So there's been a bit of discussion in the chat, especially at the beginning, about our video setup, so we'd like to guide you through it. As Patrick mentioned in the opening, we only had four weeks to get everything up and running. We had nothing. We had laptops. Um, they're obviously not beefy enough, and our webcams are not really a standard we wanted to have here. So how do you build an online video conference? Well, for us, the main part, as mentioned, was Zoom. We had six laptops running Zoom, uh, three for each stage, so one for the speaker, one for the herald, and one for the slides. And we used laptops because we wanted to have real inputs, because we didn't feel confident uh, on scrubbing the content directly from the screen, but rather having hardware inputs, thus saving on huge amounts of GPU time, uh, improved our setup widely. And this, you can see from this morning, how it looks like when there is one conference, in this case on the right in preparation, and the conference on the left is already running. Next up, we feed everything via HDMI or SDI into a very beefy computer. Again, how do you do online streaming? Well, we don't know, but we looked at the uh, lovely streamers over on Twitch and other video streaming platforms and looked at their setups. And so we came up with what maybe most of you would call a gaming computer. It's a very fairly recent Ryzen uh, GPU with a beefy GPU d uh, in it. Uh, we have 32 gigs of RAM, SSDs in it, and we're using Blackmagic and Elgato capture cards to capture all the signals and to do H.264 encoding and hardware so we don't get bottlenecked in this. The setup is a gaming computer, but it served us greatly, and I, can, I cannot report any crashes in, in this uh, part. So then, this is the setup of this computer. We have three screens. On the very right, you can see every input feed we have. Uh, in the middle, you can see all the scenes, and on the left, you can see some statistics and audio levels. We've mixed everything together uh, using an Elgato Stream Deck because this allowed us to have some buttons to do clicks rather than to drag and drop stuff or remember weird uh, screen uh, shortcuts. Um, it's also very nice because you can put very nice graphics on the small OL OLEDs there and display interesting things. Also, what I would like to note is the uh, square box in front of the screen because someone was kind enough to bake cake for us and we've been enjoying this all conference long. Thank you for that. So then we had to build a local studio where I'm currently standing. Our local studio consists of soft, soft boxes, um, which are making my face nice and shiny. Um, those were acquired by eBay uh, from someone who's used them, I think, for beauty shots. On the floor, we had construction lights and uh, construction lights bring the interesting challenge with you that they run on 50 hertz. Normally, we would say we would produce this whole conference with 60 FPS, but having 60 frames per second uh, with a 50 frames per second flickering 
is a bit of annoying. So we've tried calling the local municipalities and asked them to switch up the net frequency to 60 hertz, but they politely declined and told us to go fuck ourselves. Okay. Then microphones. You can see it here. Uh, we have micro uh, wireless microphones, uh, two at the count. Um, they served as a great job and are also running smoothly. Now you can see my perspective. You see the soft boxes, you see the laptop I'm currently on. Um, you can see that I have this wonderful DSAN limit timer next to me where I can see how much time I have to uh, have remaining uh, for speaking. We usually use this at the local conference to hint speakers on their remaining time. And then in front of me, there is a screen mirroring the camera image so I can see myself. The camera itself uh, was also acquired for this conference and has served as a very nice job. We have took a recommendation from our lovely friends over at the CCC Walk. So, our studio is ready. Let's start the show. Or power outage. But not where we are at currently, luckily. It was in Munich where we are at, but it was in our backup location. So, if we had to go into full lockdown and have to produce it out of uh, Patrick's living room, then we uh, would have an issue. Luckily, we had power. Big breath, everything's good. But when the call came in that there is a power outage in Munich, our hearts skipped a beat. So now everyone be quiet. The show is about to start. The office is informed via a very uh, professional sign. Let's close the windows so that the noise is down. And when we went to the last, the very last window, this guy was there, frilling around with our fibers. <sighs> that was another small heart attack for us. Luckily, they managed not to break anything. But you can imagine how we felt at this time. We chose this location here because we have a three times redundant internet connection, so we would have uh, had a fallback option, but no one of us was looking forward to pull any of them. And the location and its internet stayed alive and the cabling guys didn't break anything. So a few heart attacks later, we're live. Everything's running smoothly and the conference has been so far. So in summary, everything went better than we expected. We had uh, in the beginning of the very first talk, uh, of the second talk, we had audio problems for two minutes. This was caused by a wonky uh, HDMI output. Uh, we had Zoom crash twice on us, uh, but this all only meant that uh, a speaker's video feed was briefly interrupted. And yeah, on, on Zoom, Zoom is not ideal. Um, we chose Zoom because it allowed us to have the slides locally and people could forward and backward their slides and we could pin users. And we imagined this would be very easy for us, just uh, open a Zoom conference, pin a user and everything's going to be fine. But sadly, the Zoom UI is not really deterministic, or at least we, it took us two days to figure it out and we still haven't. So yeah, we, we need to uh, find another solution. Also, if someone drops out of the meeting, everything goes crazy. No matter if you pin someone or not, if there is a new video signal or a video signal lost, everything will go crazy. Luckily, this hasn't happened. But it got the job done. It didn't crash entirely, and we were able to produce a nice conference for you. Also, a small improvement we could have here is that we need a better audio routing setup. We had no possibility here to monitor feeds that weren't live, and so it was a bit of hope and pray every time we sent someone live to hope that they have audio. Another summary. We now have a great setup for conferences. Uh, in the future, we can produce videos as we have for this one, and you can watch them very soon on our YouTube stream. The setup can also be easily reduced from a whole room of, of stuff to our camera and a microphone to uh, support local meetups. Also, running a local video stu uh, studio during lockdown with a absolutely minimal headcount is very hard and stressful. You don't have the amount of hands available and it was stressful to us for the whole two days, even more stressful than the whole conference. But in the end, everything worked out great. Another story the chat has been wondering about. Intro music. And 
many suggestions have been made, be it Rudi Carell or something else. Um, but really, this story or this music has has a deeper story to it. In 2019, uh, a group of us um, was doing network at uh, the CCC's Chaos Communication Camp, uh, where we basically get served with a big open field in the midst of Brandenburg and try to get 100 gig internet there. On this field, we were provided with a lovely car, uh, I think 40 year old Volvo, who had lost uh, its driving license on public streets, but was perfectly fine for the uh, campgrounds. So we were able to heavily modify it, strap on some wood to make transporting stuff easier. And also this car had a tape deck. And in this tape deck was one tape, and we didn't have any others. And on this tape, there was this track. And it sparked joy in us for the whole, I think, two to three weeks we've been there. We've been trying to find out who that song is by. We've literally been tweeting it, um, asking everyone we know. Some of you have tried Shazam, and none of you found the song. So I'd like to set up a price. If you know that song and can provide me with a link, Email me at moritz at dingnock.de and you will get a bottle of gin. So, that's the story of our music. I'd like to extend some very special thanks to Exering and Tim, uh, who led us into their office, who borrowed us, I think, when I look around myself, 20-ish monitors, HDMI, SDI cables, and were able to find a solution for every small problem we forgot and for every small cable we forgot. Thank you very much. Special thanks to our Dinoc Vogue team, who have been there for the whole conference, cutting videos, only taking small breaks to uh, relieve themselves. But aside from that, 11 hours and 30 minutes live, mixing the video with one person. Thank you. Also, special thanks to the rest of our local team um, for making this happen. And a huge thank you, at least from us here in the local team, to our remote teams. Um, there is more people organizing DNOC than the four people jumping around here. And those have been doing an amazing job, be it on social media, solving small problems here and there, uh, fixing communication channels and the like. Thank you very much for everything you did during the conference. You relieved us of a lot of stress here. So now I can hand it over to Patrick to close down this conference and give you final facts and figures. Thank you very much from the program committee and see you soon, hopefully in person. Thanks, Moritz. So, uh, it's my pleasure to end DNOC 12 in a very uh, unnormal manner, as all of this has been. So, I want to provide you with a couple of data facts. But first, let me go to our sponsors who enabled us to put all of this setup together and uh, make this conference happen in the way we wanted it to produce. A special thanks to our diamond sponsor Flex Optics, um, to our platinum sponsors Core Backbone, DKIX and IPHH, as well to our supporting sponsors Zipgate, Alita Networks, Tic, Santaro, NLAX and Exaring. Just as a reminder, if you don't have it in your head anymore, there is actually one additional point this afternoon. At 5 p.m., there is the DNOC EV general meeting. So if you remember, you should have received a Zoom invitation and a voting invitation. If you haven't, please reach out to Malta at DNOC.de. For more information, go to our website on the governance page. So coming back to the numbers. With 705 attendees, out of them, 38 students, DNOC 12 has been the most successful that we've ever had. We'd like to transport that to hopefully in-person meetings in future, but we've clearly understand that there is a definite need for having a virtual part of that as well. So we believe that will be the future way to go and we're definitely going in that direction. Just to give you a couple of facts more, out of the 705 attendees, actually 599 checked in, which is only a no-show rate of 15%. For us, and out of our expectations that we had for a virtual online conference, that is huge and very really good. So thank you all for showing up and attending. 
Looking at the live stream, we had 509 unique viewers uh, attending the live stream. At peak, we had 355 viewers. Uh, and out of the emojis that you used a lot over the whole days, the highest peak was clapping with 97 people at the same moment, uh, at the same time. So looking at the ranking of the emojis, um, there was a clear leader with 97, but the hearts followed clearly with 79, thumbs up with 56, um, and the laughing, smiling with 55. And would we like to see the 35 at the end with the something happened? Uh, wasn't used that much. So that seems to be a good sign from our side. We put a couple of graphics in here uh, from day one and day two to share with you. Um, these will be in the slides. I think that's a bit tricky to read on the live stream. Same for day two, so that you have a bit of data and facts and can enjoy that as we did. At this point, we would like to extend a huge thanks to the team from Venueless who made this happen within a, just a couple of months, had detailed discussions with us and basically tried to make everything happen that we wanted. Uh, and to our knowledge, there wasn't one single major fault over the whole three days. That's a huge improvement and a huge success for all of us and we really enjoyed it. So thank you very much to that. So what's left? Uh, with 705 people attending, we actually now have 390 goodie bags to ship in the next one to two weeks. So I'm assuming my living room is going to look much more crowded than this, actually, because that was less than 300. And also there is Dinox 13 2021. At this point, there is complete uncertainty of what is going to be possible or not possible, but we're looking brightly in the future and we're hoping that there will be some kind of physical presentation. So with that, I'm happy to announce that Dinox 13 will happen from the 7th to the 9th of November in 2021. And if everything goes well and we can go back to normal, it will happen in Hamburg again and we're, uh, we already reserved the location from last year. Uh, if it doesn't happen, obviously we're going to go virtual again and you can be sure that Dinox 13 will happen after all. And with that, I'd like to thank our whole crew, everyone participating, and thank you especially for making this happen, for attending, for talking to us, for commenting, asking questions. Uh, stay home, stay safe, have a lovely day, and see you all at Dinox 13.